Okay, so back in Simeo, uh, what we're gonna do today is we're going to explore different system setups to see if there's differences between uh, what we currently have, right? This is kind of like our default system and maybe a different uh, queuing system. And as a result of that, we're gonna need to create some statistics to be able to um, help us determine the measures of performance, the difference in those between this model, the default, and maybe one that we're exploring. So let's rename this model that we have here to be baseline. So this is how our fast food restaurant is currently set up. Um, customers arrive according to a Markovian process, so that's exponential arrival rate, and they're served according to a Markovian process, and there are two servers at this server block. So this is an MM2 queuing system, or generalized an MMS. And we're going to explore what would it look like as instead of we had one line that went into two servers, what if we had two separate servers? So customers would arrive and then they would go to either of these two lines and then wait for the one single server. So let's right click on our baseline model. And we're going to click duplicate model. So everything that was contained within this baseline model is going to be duplicated into the baseline model. So let's rename this to, to be, um, I'll call it M. Uh, no, this will be my two by M, M1, okay. All right, so in order to make these, uh, these changes, I can uh, control C, control V, this fast food block. So now I have a duplicate of this block. Let's change the capacities to one. Click on this, change the capacity to one. And then I will use a connector. So if I go over to my library, double click on connector and then when I connect between nodes I'm clicking each time I want it to add I can click es uh, or type escape and then I have all my connectors in there okay so customers are going to arrive according to the same arrival distribution as the baseline model but now they're going to randomly choose the top or the bottom uh, server uh, fast food line just based on random like a flip of the coin because there's an equal probability of choosing up or down in the way that this is currently set up. So if I were to fast forward this, uh, actually let's stop this. If I were to run it, I want you to be able to see the behavior. You can see that just based on random chance, the people chose this bottom line when they could have gone up here and gotten to a shorter line, but they're just doing it based on random chance. So uh, for example, an entity will show up and it randomly went to the top one. And you can see that as this model uh, performs over time, they're just going to choose randomly. And you're going to have different performance in this model. If I were to go look at the results tab as compared to the baseline model. OK, so the baseline model, let's run this to the end. OK, now let's look at. The. Well, let's say, how does this change affect the time that the customer spends in the queue waiting? If I go to the server in the baseline model, I can see that in the input buffer, this is the average time in station for any customer that was there. So that's pretty clear. I can take that straight from uh, Simeo's built-in results, and I know that that is an answer that I can uh, write about in a report. If I go to the other model, I'll see that in the results tab, I have my server fast food and fast food one, and they have separate input buffer time and station. So, and I can't simply average these because they saw different numbers of customers. So how am I supposed to be able to figure out how much time that each customer in this second model spent waiting? Well, what I can do is click stop first. We're going to go to the definitions tab. And the definitions tab is where you can create different variables for uh, for keeping track of of things within your model, and then you can report them in your report in your results tab by creating statistics. So what we want to report is uh, wait time. Let let's let's report wait time. 
OK, I'm going to use a tally statistic and a tally statistic. What that will do is. Based on a particular event, it will track a. Uh, a value. So for example, at you know, as soon as somebody finishes processing, um, I will take an observation and then I will add it to my append it to my uh, list, if you will, or an array of observations. So the tally statistic, if I click on that. What I want to report is. Uh, time wait. That's what I'll call it, and then I'll call this stat to make it clear for myself just in terms of naming time wait stat. So this is going to track all of my wait times. And then in my report and my results, I'm going to get some uh, some statistics on the statistic, uh, the overall wait time. All right, I'm going to make the unit type time. OK, sweet. So I have a place to put all my observations. How do I actually keep track of this? Well. If we go back to the model, let's go back to the facility view. A customer starts waiting when they enter the queue here. Right, so let's just let's just run this and then pause it. So they they start waiting when they enter the queue and they stop waiting after they have entered into processing and immediately prior to starting service. So the time between when they enter this queue and when they start service, that's the amount of time that they spent waiting. So in order to track that, what we need to do is is one keep track of when each entity started waiting and then take an observation of the difference between when they start processing and when they started waiting. OK, so what does that look like? The best way to do this is to assign each individual entity its own variable to track its own wait time. So I'm going to stop this. And we're going to select on model entity. And model entity has its own definitions and, and data and processes that we can add to it. So in the definitions tab, under states, this is where we're going to create a variable. And the variable that we are going to create is, oh, got something in run mode. I got to go find end of run. I'll stop that one. Yep, we're stopped. Okay, here we go. So I'm back in model entity. I'm in the states under the definitions tab. And I'm going to create a real data type. So the real data type is kind of like a floating point number where you can have a decimal in terms of the uh, the observed number value. OK, so this is going to be time start wait. OK, this is going to have every single model entity is going to have the ability to track the time that it started waiting. So I'm going to have time um, units I will do in minutes. OK, so time start wait. So this is just an empty variable that is going to track for each entity when they started waiting. Now, if we go back into the two by MM1 model, we need to uh, do something where we assign the time that the uh, entities started waiting. So there's a couple ways to do this, and I'll do it uh, this way first. So if I click on this node, you see I've selected this node. This is the input at fast food one. Input at fast food one. If I scroll down to state assignment, on entering, I can add a row, and meaning that once an entity enters, it will trigger a state assignment, a state variable assignment, and it'll assign it a new value. So I click those three dots. Click add, assign if entity entering, state variable name. Now, if I do the drop down, it'll start to filter. So I go model entity dot, what did I call it? Time start wait. Yes. OK, so what this is saying is if an entity enters, I want you to change its time start wait from zero. I want you to make that time now. Come on, time now. OK, time now is a property that returns the current simulation time in hours. So now what this is going to say is once this triggers, every entity is going to have its time that it started waiting. It's so like imagine if you gave somebody a ticket and it said, hey, you started waiting at 8.05 in the morning and each entity is going to keep track of their individual wait time. OK, cool. So I'm going to copy the same logic and I'm going to add it to this other 
input node. So the other block, we're going to add, entity entering. If I start typing a part of the word, so time, start, wait, yep, it filters down really quickly. And I can double click that and I'll change the new value to be time now. And I can tab complete, making it faster, minutes. OK, so now what this is going to do is, is every single entity that enters either of these nodes will get a new assigned value of the time that they started waiting. OK, now. We need to do an, uh, a tally uh, step to be able to figure out a way to keep track of different observations of how long each entity started waiting. So if I go here, if I click on fast food, what I want to do is, well, what I really want to do is something about before processing. So I'm in the state assignments. I don't really have any logic here that allows me to use a tally statistic here, which is kind of frustrating. But what we can do is we can use an add-on process trigger, an add-on process trigger. So there's lots of uh, options to add on a process. These are essentially like functions. We're going to build a function that will trigger before processing. We will create a new one. So I'm going to call this uh, end wait. Nope, not that. Create new. I'll double click that and it's going to call it fast food one before processing. Cool. Where can I find this process? Let's go to the processes tab. Ah, oh, here we go. There's a process that was created here. Um, I am going to uh, reset that. I don't care what category it is. We're going to change the name to, to say end wait. OK, so this is like my function name. My function name just says it calculates the wait time. Right. So what we can do here is. Add in on the, under the common steps. A tally, so I'm clicking and dragging until it populates in here tally. And what this is going to do is every single time that somebody enters. Here an entity enters, but before processing, it's going to trigger the logic of end wait. And what we want it to do is we want it to reference the tally statistic time wait stat, and it is going to use an expression. The expression is time now, whatever time it is when this is triggered, minus model entity dot time start wait. So what this is going to do is it's going to find the current simulation time and subtract away the time that the entity started waiting and it is going to give us a result in minutes of the amount of time that the entity spent waiting. OK, this is great. So uh, this function will work as many times as I need it to. I'm actually going to go back to the facility view and under fast food, this other block, this other server, I'm going to do the same add on process trigger for before processing and wait. So now time any entity enters into service here. Or here it is going to trigger the end wait logic. OK, so that's a lot of steps. Let's fast forward our model and see what the results are. OK, so now. You can see that because I've added in a. Uh, a new statistic. This statistic shows up in my results tab. And now this is a holistic view of the average wait time. So in the two by MM1, the average wait time was 0 0.09 minutes. Let's go to the baseline. The average wait time was 0 0.0332 minutes. So you can tell that this model, the two by MM1, is less efficient than the baseline model. So I hope that that was helpful in terms of creating your own statistics um, to be able to track things. Uh, the last piece that I'll add is. If you have a state variable or you have a property or an event, it won't show up in your results unless you create a statistic. A statistic. To show up here, so in order to get something in your results tab, you have to have in your definitions a statistic here for it to populate. All right, good luck, happy modeling.